so cool. All right, this is going to be a very difficult day. I have a million fires to put out. I actually don't even know where to start with purchasing a collection out of Europe. Um, I had basically two of the cars sold. It's like a six or seven million dollar deal. Contract done, inspector ready to do the final inspection. One of the cars needed a restoration, so the inspection actually was just a formality. It was basically done deal. Unfortunately, the sellers did not import the car properly. So it was in the EU, it was moved outside of the EU. When they brought it outside of the EU, now there's a fear that if the car gets moved again when we move it, even though we're a dealer and we don't actually pay uh, the sales tax, um, it would be the consumer that pays the sales tax, uh, we could get a, a fine or a fee of VAT in the EU, which could be 20%. When you're talking about a number that big, it destroys all profit margin and everything. So uh, here we go, let's try to save this. Hello, my friend, how are you? Just another day putting out a, a, a bunch of fires this week. <laughs> I don't know if you got my last message. I, I, I had an idea and maybe we can calm the seller and figure out a, a resolution by bringing Silver Tiger Jay in to help lead it. He's creative, he does everything by the book, and, and maybe that's a solution to try to get this done. Yeah, definitely, I'm happy to get him involved. By the way, I was visiting Silver Tiger last week. I spoke to the buyer of the one car, and he said, listen, John, make it happen, you can figure it out, get it done. So he's, he's very, okay. You know, I, I told him the situation. I told him, hey, this might not happen. He's like, no, 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 no. You're going to get it done. Figure it out. If, oh, the good thing is if the car gets properly imported in Switzerland, we can then do a temporary export to Italy for the restoration. Then we can do yes. it. Yes. Awesome. Thank you, John. All right. Thank you. Thanks, brother. Bye. He was more optimistic today that we can work it out. So let's see. We have two other sort of fails, actually three other fails. There is a situation with a Mura um, that we went to look at, and now I think we've been offered another Mura, and I don't know if it's the same car. The chances that there'd be two cars, red with black 1967 in the Northeast, are pretty slim. But we received a inspection report of a car that was supposed to be an original paint, original interior car, uh, very low miles. I signed a contract, is very excited to buy the car. And then if you look at this inspection report, it is a complete disaster. I mean, non-matching numbers. It's got the engine from a later car, which is not the end of the world, but the value is a huge, it's probably a 10%, maybe a 20% uh, discount when you're talking about uh, an engine from another Mura, a later Mura, not original paint, which is okay, but when you're paying a premium for an original paint Mura with original interior, uh, it's not okay, <laughs> you know, if, if we were paying a normal price, but we we're paying a very hefty premium, and I don't believe the miles are original now, just looking at the overall condition of the car. So we thought we were buying that, it didn't happen, and then we thought we agreed on a Countach, which I'm gonna try to save this morning, and we thought we had a deal on the Koenig Testarossa that we spoke about, and it feels like this week is full of disasters and failures, which does not look good for our inventory, not our week. What's going on, John? What's up, brother? How are you? I don't know when the last time you spoke to him was. It was um, it was when I told you, let's see if we can try to meet around 700 yeah. for for both cars, and, and I wanted sure. to see what your update was. He's amicable, but not flexible. <laughs> That's a good line. Amicable, yeah. but not flexible. <laughs> yeah. Originally, he was looking for for the cars. Just stress that you yep. were familiar with both cars and you know, whatever, whatever. Um, and I'm like, yeah, there's nobody more familiar than John with Countach's. That's why we're yep. dealing with him. And he's the one that's telling us the cars need $50,000 in 
service. Yep. The last number he gave me to answer your question is 720. Okay. Let me uh give give me a couple hours to think about it and I will uh, yeah. I'll call you back shortly. I'm not happy about that either. It's the Koenig, Testarossa and Kuntash. One car needs 50, one car needs 100, but they're both really nice foundations. John Hooper inspected them, our service manager, and he was like, no, they're, they're fantastic. So this is, what are we on, disaster three. Our fourth disaster, we thought we had a deal on a magnificent Kuntash, a 40 or 50 mile original car. The seller then told us when we sent the contract that he actually meant it was in euros, not USD. So that would be a difference today at this price point of about fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000, which, you know, on, on one of these cars, it, it, you know, that's a lot of money. I just got some great news. Nura Van Halen car is out for its first test drive, which is incredibly exciting. Um, we're gonna have to send somebody to Italy to document that. And I'm gonna call our buddy Herschel one more time and try to save this last deal. But we will need inventory. It is not looking good right now for inventory at all. Yes, sir. So you want to do a, a power lunch, dig up some inventory and create a new wish list? Let's do that. Let's grab the Daytona. We'll go to Kush. We'll go over a wish list and then let me grab this. It's Herschel. But that's the plan. Okay. I'll see you at the office. Um, hey, what's going on? Hey buddy, sorry, I was on the phone. I had an idea to try to save the 40 mile Countach deal. And I think my opinion is, we struck out on the Mura, we're, I'm, I'm struggling with this F40 deal, the, the package of cars in Europe. The seller's freaking out and he thinks he screwed up. It's a disaster. He canceled Michelotto's inspection. So the Countach, what if we told him, hey, we screwed up or we collectively screwed up. What if we say, listen, open book, we will give you 10% of the upside on the car. There's some meat there. I think I'll do it. Okay, so let me get to work on it. All and right. And uh, we'll talk when you come back. On awesome, brother. All right, cool. All right. Yeah, bye. 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 So we are also organizing a insane inspection. Welcome to Ortec. <laughs> hey. It is a development car, Lamborghini. I don't want to give it away too much. I have been chasing this car for years. We have a signed contract. We're sending one of our inspectors uh, uh, a new friend of ours, uh, someone we just met, and a photographer, uh, Sergio, could not make it to the Arctic Circle. And I'm actually not kidding, the car is literally in the Arctic Circle. It is, it is in one of the most northern places in Scandinavia, so very exciting. There's some really big claims, so if everything checks out, this is huge for history, um, and, and we're super excited to share it. Good, looks good, looks good. This is the USA car that passed its final, final test drive. Everything passed. Really passionate owner who bought this. Steven needs to polish these, he didn't polish these. Right on cue. That sucks. I thought we saved the F the Ferrari collection deal, but no. I'm trying to think what else legit. It's great that inventory is low. It's pretty exciting. Uh, it's, it shows that the market's healthy. It's in a healthy place. Really special cars. People are buying very special cars. But the biggest problem with the inventory being low is your next quarter. Uh, so so I wanted to try to, we have a running wish list and I wanted to, it's in an Excel file whatnot, but I sort of, I love to be hands-on sometimes and sort of write things and make notes. I think it's just super healthy. It's just the way I think. So we know, we don't know where this is. Cannonball Run 2 Countach. We have a, by the way, we have an updated owner on the Tyson Diablo Roadster. Such an iconic car, we took photos with the car. He's, he actually had four, I think three or four Diablo Roadsters. This was the yellow car though. Very famous photo of him with the car. So we need to chase that. That's yep. gonna be priority one. We have an updated name on Michael Jordan's 512TR. 
Sheldon Brooks, we have nothing. We're going to get a private investigator now. What about the AMG in Colorado? We've got the guy's name. I know where he works. He won't call me back. The shop won't, the shop won't nudge him. You know, he didn't, doesn't want to be contacted. What do you think about a factory 5000 S fuel injected, white with red, the car that no sale that Miko. It didn't meet the guy's reserve. 10,000 miles. Wow. All right, well, we got a big list. Let's go. Because we've had a few disasters and failures of buying new inventory, can't make money without inventory, um, we are going to go on a full, full court press, hands on deck. Been chasing the Mike Tyson uh, yellow Diablo Roadster for years. I think it's just such a cool part of pop culture. Uh, Mike Tyson history next to the greatest basketball player of all time Michael Jordan's famous 512 TR the famous black car very high mileage car today. It was modified at one point. I found the VIN I know where the car is so we're just gonna chase vanilla ice's Gambala. I know where it is. I've located it the owner has not been completely receptive and god that Daytona is gorgeous and what I love about this car is it won a bunch of awards. It's been beautifully restored. Uh, the car is, I mean, super straight. It's a, it's a motion products restoration, but the last owner drove it all over the country. I mean, he put thousands of miles on this car. He did rallies all over. Uh, so this is a car that someone could drive today and enjoy. Uh, that's why we took it out for lunch today. Um, I don't always do this with inventory. gonna love it oh my god I am going to inspire some passion again around this car this car has been extremely frustrating for myself and the team uh, it's a 95 Diablo VT that basically uh, the engine was blown it, it ran uh, but it had a one bad piston it sat at my dad's um, for years and I bought it from a client of his I had this idea to turn it into a basically a Diablo hot rod SVR using factory SVR parts now the way that actually started was I started calling Lamborghini for just normal parts and the guys uh, the parts department at Lamborghini told me hey you know we have some really cool SVR parts left so I went on a shopping spree I got an original SVR wing uh, rear hood, uh, I got the, the Lexan windows, I did SV wheels, lightweight flywheel, all these different things. And then unfortunately, during that time, I became very busy in my personal life. I've had two, two boys since. Uh, imagine that's how long it's been, three and a half years. In that time as well, our shop became very busy. Um, so I kept putting this on the back burner. I took a deposit on this car uh, from a very good client about a year and a half ago and then during the process we were having problems with it running and I just said you know what let me give you a deposit back I'm gonna fix it myself I'm gonna finish it so I have made a, it a mission to try to get this car done by the end of August uh, it's put a lot of hours in this I put a lot of money into this now it's all covered in plastic now but I redid the interior like an SVR would be the door panels I did sort of lightweight so yeah, need to uh, fix this disaster quick. Tail lights, uh, the black, and I bought an SV rear grill, uh, same in the satin black. This is something that I need to finish. I put it to the back of the line to make sure we finish our clients' cars first. Uh, but we're gonna try to work on this on weekends, after hours, and do, it, do whatever it takes to get this finished by August because now today I probably have you know a fortune into it. It was incredible to see it running for the first time driving but man we need to get this car done.
So when we started this YouTube journey, I told you guys that we were just gonna go raw and uh, sort of show the good, the bad, and the ugly. And this week has been filled with failure and disaster. Um, yes, we've had some great things happen. We delivered a Diablo, we took in a beautiful Daytona, and our good friend and client Doug got his Monaco Countach into Pebble Beach. But we were fortunately, unfortunately, not very successful buying some new inventory.